it's sad. Now, let's talk about vitiligo, a situation uh, we're told about the loss of pigmentation that will create white, uh, whitest patches on your skin. I've been joined on Skype by DSP Dr. Faisal Ayambila. Doc, good morning. How are you doing, sir? Uh, good morning, Johnny. How are you? Very well, Doc. So, uh, we've heard about vitiligo, uh, but yes. tell us about it. What is it exactly? Okay. Uh, well, pretty much you, you, you spoke about it in your introduction. Um, it occurs when you have pale white patches on the skin as a result of a lack of the skin pigment called melanin. Mm. And there are two types. You know, vitiligo could be a condition where you have it in certain parts of the face and on the arms, just certain parts of the body. Or it could be a condition where you have it on all, all the parts of the skin. Okay. Yes. So it, it depends on how it presents. Is there a single cause to this apart from the loss of pigmentation could it be hereditary what is it yes you see it's one of those conditions eh? it's very interesting that with all the advancements in modern science we still can't tell exactly why some of these things happen but the theory so far is that you know the immune system once again mm. becomes hyperactive and instead of fighting bacteria and infections it begins to fight the cells in the skin okay and of course it also runs in families and so you need to have the genetic uh, predisposition it runs okay. in your family mm. and then if you live in ghana where the sun is so high the two will interact and before you know you have vitiligo the the hereditary point is is key to me at this point so uh, exactly. what would necessitate this uh, for example somebody has uh, a certain pigmentation, another has one, maybe your father is an albino or your mother is. <laughs> Does it have the possibility of giving you this con condition? Oh, yes, it is. Um, and, Johnny, you would even find it interesting to note um, that, of course, these things run in families, and it's also linked to some other conditions. For example, if you're in your family, someone has a goiter, thyroid problem, some forms of diabetes, mm. You know, you realize that there's a link between some of these conditions and vitiligo. Okay. And so all these areas are still being researched. And uh, we'll see how far we can get with that. Is it contagious? Oh, no. <laughs> mm. Yes, no, no, not at all. You see, these are some of the things that we have to address. And, of course, your very good program, New Day, is helping us do some of these things. It's not contagious. You know, if you have two children playing, one has vitiligo and the other does not have it, it's not going to pass from one person to another, as we have been made to believe. Okay. And, Johnny, actually, most of the problems we have with vitiligo mm. have to do with a social perception okay. of the condition, as, right. as you all know. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Are you able to identify the symptoms right from birth, or uh, you grow up to realize that you have vitiligo? Again, there are two types of vitiligo. Okay. With the first one, it's more like congenital. So the baby is born, and then you look at the skin and realize that, oh, this baby already has patches on the skin. Okay. That's the first type. But with the second type, as you begin to grow, and a typical example is with women. So you have a woman who has grown up all her life, and she's okay, okay mm. and then she decides to get pregnant and have a child. Mm. Because of the stress of childbirth, for example she could end up having vitiligo. Okay. And for some people, let's say you have a 25-year-old British man who was living in London right. and now has to come and live in Accra. Mm. The exposure to the sun mm -hmm. can precipitate vitiligo. And so it's two ways of looking at it. Either you get it as you're growing up or the more common version, you'll be born with it. Is that treatment for vitiligo? Um, the treatment is available. The only sad part is the fact that once you have the condition, the patches that have developed will not be reversed. And mm. so the treatment is really just to stop it from progressing. Okay. You see, mm. So that you don't get extra patches. And so most of the treatment really has to do with psychological counseling, talking okay. to the people around you and creating a good atmosphere for you. Mm. For those yes. who are living with vitiligo, what kind of advice would you give to them? Um, the, as usual, you know, you would have to deal with the psychological trauma of it. I personally have a friend I'm studying with currently okay. in the London School of Hygiene right. who recently got an outbreak of vitiligo. So mm. you have to just be able to counsel the person, make sure he's mentally stable to deal with the rigors of this condition. Okay. And of course, counsel the people around him as well. But in terms of treatment per okay. se, mm. again, it's not very available, but we have some very good treatments um, if you can afford 
you could apply. And sometimes even the irreversible patches would be reversed. And also, we can make sure that we don't progress further. Give, but a, give, you, give us yes. some examples of the treatment modules that are available. The most common treatment in our Ghanaian setting, of course, would be the steroidal treatment. Um, we have some ointments we apply, and we give some drugs in the forms of tablets that you can take to regulate the immune activity and make sure that it doesn't progress. The sad part is that in Ghana, mostly, what we need to do is to prevent it from progressing. Mm. The damage that has been caused, really, we are not able to, to reverse it, especially in the Ghanaian setting. Okay. And so we always want to counsel them that, look, you already have this patch over here. It's going mm. to be there for life. We are sorry. But we will give you treatment to, show, to make sure that it won't progress. Okay. Right. But you, as usual, mm. we, we should be able to demystify it because most of us think that, oh, it's uh, sun sun yari, it's because of demonic cases and things like that. So we are not even going to the hospital. Meanwhile, okay. we have lots of these creams, tablets. These medications are available. Some of them are even on insurance. Mm. So we should always go to the hospitals. Doc, I want to thank um, you very much. I want to thank you very much for your time. And it's all the way in the, in the United Kingdom. <laughs> uh, thank you for your time. He's been a wonderful resource to us. Dr. DSP Faisal Ayambela has been our guest here on TV3 New Delhi.